Hey guys, it's May May, and today I'm bringing you a review of the We Are Memory Keepers Supreme Ruler. This ruler is definitely supreme. When I saw this ruler online, in my mind, I thought, oh, it's a ruler. Well, it's so much more as far as the size of the ruler. I want to show you in comparison to some of our favorite rulers out there, okay? So I'm going to move this guy down just a little bit. This is the Tim Holtz ruler. You guys are familiar. We use this one a lot in my crafting at least. And this guy is this compared to this. Do you see that? It is massively different, okay? This ruler is a 12 inch ruler. This one is 18 inches, but it's beefy. Like it's really, really significant. Um, it has some cool features we're gonna go over in just a second, but I just wanted to show you the size. It's sturdy, it's heavy, it's not too heavy, like it doesn't feel like it would be so heavy I would get tired of using it, but I will tell you this, I don't feel like this is my everyday ruler by no means. Um, this ruler, which you can't get anymore from what I've been told, I've been looking for one, but this is the perfect ruler and it's my understanding they discontinued it, but I use this one a lot in my crafting and um, you guys really like it every time I show it, but I can't find it. If I can, I'll get it for you, but um, this one is very, I thought it was going to be very similar. I thought this one was going to have like this press down grip in the middle. It doesn't actually have the press down. This one does. You can see that it's got the little press in the middle there that grips it to the table. And that's great and fine. This one's much smaller and much lighter weight. But I think that for what I would like to use this one for, it's going to be great. One thing I think it's super cool for, and I just want to mention this real quick. If you're a Cricut crafter and you use those vinyls that we buy that are kind of in the bigger sheets or in the, um, sometimes they're like 12 by 24 or 12 by 20. I know this only goes to 18 inches, but it's so meaty and so bulky. This would be good for laying on top of vinyl and slicing. It would just be a good uh, tool for that because it's so big. It also has that grip in the middle. It's not as sturdy as the one I just showed you. I want to show you, like if I press this down, it's pretty good. It's not made to stick perfectly and keep it in place forever, but it does give you something to grip onto and it will help you be a little more sturdy. The only thing I, the first thing I have issue with for me is that it's too big for my filming station. So where I film, it's going to be hard for me to use this in videos because it's so big. It doesn't mean I don't think I'm going to use it. I really do think I'll use it a lot. Let's talk about what the ruler has and I'm going to zoom you in to see all the features. So I've zoomed you in and while I've got you in close, I want to show you something. Do you see how high this grip is for your fingers. It's really high and it's shaped so that your fingers can go inside. They kind of sink in. I'm going to turn it and let you see in the camera here. So you see how it's sunk in so your hand can fit inside there. I really like that. It, it feels great in the hand and it feels like it will be a very sturdy tool that you'll be able to use for big projects. I don't know. It feels like a big project ruler to me. All right. I'm going to slide right up here so you can look at this section here. So here's what you got. You've got inches all the way to 18. It's a, it doesn't start at zero. The edge of the ruler does not start at zero. It comes in about a quarter of an inch and it does that on the end as well. So it's really about 18 and a half inches um, all together. But you can see here, you've got zero all the way down to 18. Then it comes in and it does quarter. It actually shows you in fraction. So you have one quarter, one half, three quarters, all the way down. So that's pretty handy because I have a lot of friends that don't like to measure and don't like to figure that out. So that's awesome to be able to look and just know that's your um, quarter increments. Then here you can see these are eighth inch marks. So this is one quarter and half of that is one eighth. So you can see that it's kind of split so you can see those at the bottom. It's not all the way to the top. That's okay. I think we can still use it this way. These numbers here that look a little bit confusing, let me show you what those are. Those are for centering objects. Let me show you how to center something. I get asked this a lot about these rulers, but I'll show you real quick. So let's say you had this piece of paper and you wanted to center it, but you didn't want to measure, or maybe you needed to make a center mark. And you could take the ruler and using the zero set, you can sit it down. I'm going to sit it haphazardly. I know this, this zero is not in the center of this paper at this point. To find the center, I'm going to slide this ruler back until the same measure is on either side. I'm still not there. Let me go back a little bit. And now you can see that I'm at the same point on either side of the ruler. So I know this is the middle of my page. That's what the centering feature is for. It can help you line things up. It can help you when you're trying to find the center of a piece of paper to maybe fold it in half, things like that. Um, you can also measure your paper and do it. But for a piece of paper like this, for example, let's measure it. 
So this piece is three and three quarters and sometimes splitting three and three quarters is not so easy, especially if it's like at three and seven eighths, it would be a little harder to split. So that's what you'd use that centering piece for. But it's pretty cool and it's so big. I do like how I can really see in there. It's almost like I have a, it's almost like um, having a magnifying glass without having a magnifying glass. That's super cool. Now I don't measure in centimeters and a lot of times you guys ask me if I can transpose something into centimeters for you, but I just don't know how to do that. I've never done it. I'm sure I could figure it out if I spent some time doing it. But this ruler is going to work for both of us if you use inches or centimeters. So let's say I tell you that something is, I don't know, three inches. If you look right here on this side and you count three inches, you can come right to this side and discover how many centimeters that really is. Super cool the way it's broken down. Check this out. You've got zero all the way through 46 centimeters and it shows you the halves. Let me sit it down so it's not wiggling. So what you get here is you get zero, half, one, half, two, half just like that. So it's in fraction form there at the top. Now, these little markings here, I think are millimeters. I'm gonna show how little I know about centimeters. I think these little marks are millimeters. I could be wrong. If I am, I apologize to all of my centimeter measuring friends out there. But I believe that you'll be able to use this very similar to how we use our eighth and sixteenths with your ruler. And I love how clear and crisp this is. Also, and I didn't mention, this is a see-through ruler, which I love see-through rulers because I can put paper underneath and measure on the inside as well. Why would I do that? Check this out. Let me go back to inches because I don't do centimeters. So let me go back here. Let's say I wanted to measure a quarter of an inch in. By holding this ruler here at the zero in the corner, I can see exactly where I need to mark because I can see through the project. You never know when you might want to see through. That's just an idea. Now, you also have on that centimeter side, you have a, a centering point as well. So the same for you. You've got the zero for our centimeter friends. And let me get this lined up. It's a little harder here because I got to use those little bitty marks. We're almost there. There we go. That feels centered. So you can kind of do the same thing on this side with the zero centering mark. Another cool feature that they have are these little measuring guides. Now this is kind of neat. I looked this up on their website and this is how they demoed it. Let's say we wanted to make a four inch square out of this paper. All right. So here's my zero mark. I'm going to move this to two inches just like so. I'm going to move this to two inches on my centering guide. So now I know I have a four inch line in between here. Okay. I'm going to lay this down on my paper. And another cool thing, let's say I want to go in one inch. I want a one inch by four inch frame. Okay. I'm using the inside that I can see through to get that one inch mark because that's one inch right there. I'm going to take my exacto, not my exacto, but a pen blade, a razor knife. And I'm going to start right here where my little guide is. Okay. And I'm just going to slice down to my next guide. Now, something I just thought about. Yes, it does have a metal guide, and let me show you how to remedy this. These little guides slide off of the ruler, okay? So you can take them and turn them around so you can use them on both sides. So if you want to use it, if you want to cut on the other side, you can do that. And again, it's the centimeters, but I can line it up looking across the ruler. I can still line this up at the inch mark. Does that make sense? I'm just going to line it up on the back side so I can use the metal cutting edge. So I've cut one side, I'm gonna move it this way. I'm gonna match it up in the top corner up there using the inside guides here to get my one inch away. I'm gonna match this here and then I'm gonna slice. Now I'm not using a very difficult measure. We're using, you know, one inch and two inches and things like that. So this is easy to do, but it makes life pretty easy because I'm not having to find the measure every time. I'm just putting it to those little marks. So same thing here, line this up, slice between my guides, and then at the bottom. So look at that, we just cut that frame right out of that paper. Super easy, right? And the guides did all the work for us. For what this ruler is, there's not a lot about it I don't love. I, again, I don't think it's my everyday card maker's ruler. I think it's a little bigger than that, a little more heavy duty, which is probably why they called it the Supreme Ruler. There's a couple of things I wish. I wish that the metal cutting edge, I wish it was either on both sides or at least on the inch side for me, because I use inches. So I wish I could use that cutting guide here. Still not a big deal because I can always, you know, measure, maybe I want to measure in 
an inch on this piece of paper. So I can use my ruler here and make a mark of an inch like so. Come down here and make another mark of an inch here. And then I can always just turn it and use that metal edge. Not a big, it's not, it's not a deal breaker for me. I'm sure I'll still use this ruler a lot, but there you go. As far as price point, I was pretty surprised. It's only $19.99 retail price. I kind of expected it to be more, especially once I held it in my hand. Really, when I thought I was buying something that was just a normal ruler size, I was kind of like, $19? That's high for a ruler. But this is so much more as far as industrial strength. That's what it reminds me of. If you're a quilter, I bet you'd love this ruler. If you were someone who, who um, made you know quilt squares and did different lining up and things like that, I bet you would love it. If you're a person who uses vinyl and you have to cut, you know who you are because if I say it, you know how frustrating it is to have to cut down a sheet of vinyl to 12 by 12 to fit on our mats and getting it to lay straight because it's so wide, this ruler is going to go all the way on and off of that and give you a great place for cutting. So I hope you enjoy this review. I think it's a good ruler. Again, not my everyday ruler. I want to make sure I tell you that. If you don't have this ruler, it's not going to be the end of the world, but I think it's worth it. If you can afford to add this to your collection, I think you'd like it. I'm not sad about having it in mind. There's no telling where I'll get to use it, especially fabric cutting. That's another one. Fabric product projects, this would be great for that. And this groupie would really stick well to fabric projects. So tell me below where you would use a ruler like this and let me know what you think about it. I tell you what, I think it's a, I think it's worth it, you know, but I'm one of those people that collects just about everything we are does because I think they're awesome. Thanks so much for watching today, guys, and I will see you again next week. Bye-bye.